Hello and welcome to Your Money, Their Hands. And this week, my guest is Natalia Barazal. She's the manager of Lombard ODA's Asia Convertible Bond Fund. Thank you, first of all, Natalia, for coming in. China, between the mainland and Hong Kong, you have a 40% exposure. Given China's problems in rebalancing its economy towards more domestic demand, are you worried and thinking about changing that exposure? Well, 40% in Asia uh, with uh, China, you can not really invest in Asia without buying the Chinese thing. And I totally agree with you. That's what we did actually about six, eight months ago. We rebalanced a few of our ideas of investment into the new consum consumption thing. So those are department stores, telecom companies, anything related to consumer. So I totally agree. The best thing is to start playing consumption and not just export driven. So you do feel that China is making the right moves then in order to encourage investors like you to say that this story will happen, if not now, soon? Yes, soon, hopefully. It takes quite a long time to move such um, a big shape of the economy, of what's driving the economy, into a new sector. But they're doing everything they can to do that. The new plan from the government is actually very much focused on consumption. And that's exa exactly a very good sign. Other big exposure, of course, is India, 14%, mm. another powerhouse, and, and again, hopefully, uh, domestic demand increasing. But they've got some fairly draconian interest rates and some quite high inflation now. What's your view looking forward? Uh, I think we decrease it also from a year ago because exactly of those arguments. I think in the short term, we're not going to increase that exposure. Maybe the next six to eight months, because yes, they have to raise interest rates to fight inflation, and it's having an impact on growth. So short term cautious, but medium to long term still bullish. I wanted to ask you, I uh, should make clear, obviously the convertible bond fund is, is corporate paper, but there is a Eurozone crisis brewing, not least with Greece. Is that going to have a knock on effect to sentiment ac across the world to all sorts of bonds? I think so. Um, if only when an investor is looking for diversification from its European investments, and usually it's mostly invested in Europe. So maybe putting a bit of your money outside Europe, especially in emerging market, where you do have a lot of growth compared to Europe, is not such a bad move. Do you feel that over the next two to three years, you might look at some of the more peripheral markets within the Asia-Pacific region? The most emerging ones like Philippines, Indonesia, maybe, but we probably need more uh, improvement in the economy. Corporate governance is an issue everywhere, uh, but when you go into smaller countries, it could become quite a big issue. So um, probably, because I think those countries are going to, to grow massively, and they're very dependent, and they bring good opportunities. How interdependent, I've always been fascinated, how interdependent are these economies, or like the ASEAN mm -hmm. nations, as opposed to trading globally? Are they self-supporting? I don't really believe in the decoupling theory, although China has become quite independent compared to 10 years ago to the rest of the world. But everybody's interlinked, whether within that region, Asia-Pacific, the countries among themselves, or dependent from the U.S., from Europe. Everybody's linked to everyone. Natalia Barazal from Lombard Edia. Thank you very much indeed.